Spirits of the living God, make us one. Spirits of the living God, give us hope. Spirits of the living God, show us grace. Spirit of the living God, be with us now. We welcome you to worship on this beautiful day that we that God has made. And so we rejoice and we're very glad, especially that it's not raining. <laughs> Today was designated as Hat Sunday, and so you were invited to wear a hat. If if and it started out as people with red hats. If you if someone in your car has a red hat, honk your horn. <laughs> okay, we have a few here. But we think about all the different styles of hats that there are, and, and that's one of the things that people enjoy doing. Let's continue with our worship service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Our opening song this morning is Open the Eyes of My Heart. And I was at a concert once, a Christian music concert once, and the, one of the musicians in between songs said, don't lie in church. Don't say, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, because all the people who saw God died. But what we're asking is that our hearts would be open so that we could see the presence of God around us, in the people around us, and that we could sense those nudges from God when he's telling us um, to step in and uh, do something that might be a little bit out of our comfort zone. Um, I get those a lot.
That's a song that has a lot of meaning for me. Back in the end of May in 2005, I stood at a gravesite in the midst of times of sadness. I was singing those words in my heart as we were burying my father. And I have seen, and I have had my heart opened many times since to know that God is holy and that God is working in our lives and through us in the lives of others. Let's continue with the words of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit <clears throat> that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer of the day. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy that your name may be known throughout the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. God, our own God, has blessed us. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Romans 11. And it's a little odd because it's verses 1 and 2, and then it jumps to 29. So, but come with me. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I ask myself, I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, 
a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel? For the gifts and the calling of God are irre irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel acclamation is both from the psalm and the psalm 19. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, be pleasing to you. I guess we're going to sing. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus called to the, the crowd around, to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Later, Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, Great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you. And we come and we know that you are with us. Give us the confidence to risk, to step out in faith. In your name we pray. Amen. Not too long ago, once again, we had a rocket go up to the International Space Station. Many years ago, 
There were people who worked hard together to put together a landing on the moon. Some time ago now, I listened to a podcast, and it was talking about having moonshots. Moonshots, that, that idea that to imagine that people could actually get to the moon and come back. And there were so many things that they tried and experimented with, and some of them didn't work. But there were so many calculations, so much risk, so much courage that it took to get to that moonshot. And along the way, with all of those different disappointments, with all of the things that didn't work, they celebrated that. Well, that idea of taking moonshot ideas is not just going to the moon. Apparently in Silicon Valley, there's a company that celebrates, celebrates the discoveries when something doesn't work because they know that there is the possibility and the hope that it will because we add to our learning. And so it takes a risk. It takes courage to do a moonshot. And in our gospel lesson for today, we have a woman who's taking a moonshot to help her daughter. Let's take a look at that and remember the situation of what's going on. You see, in chapter 14, this, our lesson comes from chapter 15. In chapter 14, at the very end of that, the disciples and Jesus are in a boat and they get to a place called Gennesaret on the Sea of Galilee. What happened that night was tremendously important. And we heard about that last week. Jesus came walking to them on the water. And they were terrified. They had had an exhausting day the day before. And the disciples had been rowing all night. Jesus had gone up on to the mountains to pray, to worship, to re be rejuvenated. And here he comes, walking. I wonder if he was almost dancing. He felt uplifted. And he came near them. And they were terrified. And then Peter spoke, saying, If it is you, and Jesus had said, I am. And if it is you, then it really is you, then look, let me come to you. You're my rabbi, I want to be like you. And he gets out on those waves, and those waves and the Sea of Galilee can be huge, threatening. And he comes walking, and he sees that effect of the wind, feels the wind. He begins to sink, and he cries out, and Jesus reaches out his hand and lifts him up, raises him up. They walk together to the boat. And they come to shore. While they're at Gennesaret, the Pharisees come and start asking Jesus about questions, about what is clean and unclean. And so we have those two verses. It's not what goes into the body, but rather what comes out from the heart. And then we immediately have Jesus and the disciples going again to a place in the region of Tyre and Sidon. That could be a 50-mile walk. And so they journeyed there. This was not Jewish territory. It was not Samaritan territory in Galilee. This was outside of that region. And a Canaanite woman comes. And we meet her. Now, we could begin from this point of view and look at our lesson from several different ways. We could say, why is this woman daring to even talk to Jesus? A woman didn't talk to a man in public unless they're in relation. Jesus, Jewish, normally would not talk to a Samaritan. But this is a Canaanite. 
This is somebody even different than that. We could look at what took place. We could explore all of that. Now, the disciples certainly didn't get this woman because they understood she was a Canaanite. She was to be stayed away from, and she was certainly annoying them, even though they were the ones who had come to her space. The other way that we could look at this is why did Jesus say what he did? So why did Jesus say that? Well, we've got two audiences here, at least the apparent ones. One is the disciples. The other is the woman. Why did Jesus say what he did? And the first thing he says, I was sent to the lost sheep, the house of Israel. And very likely the disciples were saying, yes, Jesus, you got it right. We're right behind you. That's exactly right. The woman could have had a choice of simply leaving at that point, thinking that she was, she was outnumbered and there was no way he was going to help. He was just another, another religious leader. But she didn't. She didn't. She kept coming. She came and knelt down. It's almost as if she got in front of him and knelt down and worshipped him. Kneeling was a posture of worship. And here she is. Lord, help me. What a prayer. She's not specifically saying how, but she says, help me. And I think Jesus, the rabbi, had plans. He had ways that he could help her. But he didn't just do that automatically. He responds with, yeah, but it's not right to give the children's food to the dogs. Yeah, but even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table. She kept right there. And the probing questions of Jesus helped her grow in her faith and trust in him. And she ended that by surprising the disciples and maybe shocking them. Great is your faith. Great is your faith. Do you remember not that long before? Jesus said something different to Peter. As Peter was sinking in the water, he reached out and held him up. And he said, oh, you of little faith. And he could have said that to other disciples as well. But to this woman... A Canaanite woman. Great is your faith. You see, I think that Jesus could see the beginning of faith deepening in her life. Oh, yeah. Jesus did heal her daughter. But with that increasing faith, I think. He was acting like a good Jewish rabbi. One who keeps asking questions to go deeper. That's what Jesus was doing. He was helping her express that faith that was in her. And that woman, <laughs> increasingly, with courage and wit, went for the moonshot. She wanted her daughter to be healed. And with that, Jesus raised her up too. 
was the healing of the daughter the only thing that happened in that relationship between mother and daughter? I think not. Because I think that woman would have told that story time and time again and continued to grow in a deeper awareness of who Jesus is. So what happens to us when we look at why instead of simply what something happens? We can be accept, upset at the things that happen in our lives. And sometimes that's as far as it goes and we quit learning from that experience. But could it be that God is trying to bring something good out of that bad experience. That God is doing something deeper in our hearts and in our lives. Could it be that what God wants uh, to come out of our mouth is what we believe in our hearts? And what we believe in our hearts can be lived out in positive ways in our lives. So we remember that moonshot idea. That woman did take great risk. And she was courageous. Yes, she was also desperate for her daughter. At any point in that, she could have simply backed away, giving up. But she didn't. She kept going. How do I respond to difficult things that happen in my life? Sometimes I've been told that I shouldn't or I couldn't do that. And I accepted that word. Sometimes I have looked at those challenges ahead of me and I have stepped out, taken a risk. And actually, that's the time I've grown most in my faith and in my witness, stepping out to take that risk. I believe that we are invited by God to take that risk, be courageous, and look at the challenges around us. There are so many opportunities that we have now that we may not have had if it actually wasn't for this pandemic and the pandemics around us to challenge us, to slow us down so that we have time to think and pray and to be, and to ask God, how would you like me to respond in this day? Help, help me grow in my faith and my trust in you. Help me to take a risk. You see, in the the weeks ahead, there will be opportunities for us to think about that. And there are different opportunities that we have for us individually and together as a congregation to take risks. And together, I believe that God is with us and the Holy Spirit is there to guide us and encourage us. So I invite you to prepare this week, to pray, to ask God to open your hearts, to open your ears, to open your eyes, to see the world around us, to see people whom we can take the risk and do something. And in doing that, not only bring them a little bit of hope in this world and bring them to that, that idea that what we're doing is motivated because of our love for God, but it also helps us to grow in our own relationship with Jesus. Let us pray. God, we don't know 
what adventures lay before us. We don't know what it is that you are calling us to be and do and how to live. But we know that you hold the future in your hand. Be with us this week, this day, and in all the days ahead. Help us, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Will you join me in professing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so let us join together in prayer. And when I say the phrase, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you love the world so that you sent Jesus to redeem the world. Our world needs your love. Guide us in the ways that you are calling us to serve you in our daily lives. Help us to see ways that we can share your love with others to bring them hope in this time of fear and confusion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. prayer. Enable citizens, government, and business to develop a social consciousness toward one another. Help us to act in the best interest of others as we act to protect others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help all who are seeking to defend our country from attacks of any kind of violence, whether it be with terrorist activities, cyber chaos, or political disinformation. Protect every level of our security forces from violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide our country in the midst of elections. Help us to understand the candidates and the values for which they stand. Protect all candidates and our election process from harm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal our country over the bitter divisions and polarization of views. Guide all of us to listen to each other. Help us to build bridges of understanding so that we can preserve this democracy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect all who have experienced dangerous fires, floods, and various natural disasters in our country and around the world, including the derecho that devastated a large sweep of land, crops, and property in Iowa this past week. Provide food and shelter for those who experienced their homes and businesses destroyed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With the other churches in the conference, we pray for each other. Today we ask that you would bless Interim Pastor Gary Brandenburg, Pastor Nancy Richmond, Pastor Susan Christian, and the people at Grace in Tomahawk. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide our South African friends, including those in the Dinakana Parish. Bless the ministries of Reverend G.R. Montemese and the members of that parish. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen all who are troubled, hurting, ill, or recovering from surgery, including Larry, Bruce, Lana, Marge, all those on our prayer list, as well as others whom we name in our hearts. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort all people experiencing the death of a family member or of friends because of the coronavirus or due to other reasons. At this time, we especially lift to you the family and friends of Ken Wilcox. Give us hope and confidence in the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us join together in praying our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We pause at this time to remember in our worship that worship act of giving an offering and as we have sent in offerings or as we give them today our offerings are the resources that we give and those resources also include time and abilities and so let us give thanks for them merciful god you give we give you our gifts of resources time and abilities you make an abundance of these gifts Empower us for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. We join together in the thanksgiving for the word. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you. We give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your grieving into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with the song, Oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. And it's, it's amazing. We had a conversation earlier this week about how the different ways that gospel message is being presented. At one time, when we were younger, um, the message the new way of communicating that message was through the radio. Well, it's still here. We're doing that through the radio here. And so what we do is, is add on to those things. And one of the things that I'm participating in is a webinar series on digital discipleship and evangelism. How that word, the gospel, is now being spoken in a different language online. And so we look at that, and there are so many different ways, so many different languages that people use today to share the gospel. 
And so let's sing over a thousand tongues to sing. Remember the purpose statement at Mount Calvary? Share God's love, bringing hope to others. Couple of announcements. Remember the, uh, of the volunteering to help. There is a link at the bottom of your worship page. You can copy and paste that into your browser and then go to that site and volunteer next week to help with, um, you can help with being the, the parking attendant, the other people, setting up, taking down, that type of thing. Theme days. Next Sunday, we will be looking at that question of when will we have communion? And so I know that that's been a topic that has been discussed, and there needs to be a plan. A plan not only for when those who can gather, but when those who are not able to gather can also receive communion. August 30th, the following Sunday, is back to school. Remember that the parking attendants will dismiss you, and so that follow their directions. Even while we are apart, we are still united in Christ Jesus. Go today, reaching out to those you can. Showing grace to those you encounter. Go today with hope in a neighbor, faith in a friend, and love for a stranger. Go today a member of the body of Christ, in which we are called to be. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Thank you for coming.